Hey guys! So today I'm making a video about how I make my videos. There are three different ways that I film, um, depending on what it is I'm filming. I am going to show you how I do that. If you have any suggestions for videos that you want me to make, then just let me know because I'll probably do them. So the first video that I'm going to show you how I film are the overhead painting videos. And then the second type is going to be my more cinematic videos where I spend a lot more time filming them and I film them with a different lens. And then the third type of video that I'm going to show you how I film, which is just super simple, but my studio vlogs, um, I'll kind of go over that really quick. So I guess to start off, I will talk about my camera. So the camera I use is the Canon M50 and I've had this for a little over a year now and I love this camera. I have two lenses, the kit lens, which is the one that I got with my camera. It's the 15 to 45 millimeter lens. And the second lens is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8. And I use this lens the most. It is so pretty. Like it's such a pretty lens itself, but the footage is so nice and it's really good in low light as well. I have two tripods that are both from Amazon. The one that I use the most is the Amazon Basics, which is this one. And the other tripod I rarely use. Um, sometimes I'll use it as a second angle. So that is my equipment, my camera and tripod. On to how I film my overhead painting videos. So I try not to film just overhead painting or drawing or whatever I'm doing um, too much because it's just not as engaging. And for the overhead shots, I will use the 15 to 45 millimeter lens um, because the 50 millimeter is obviously going to be too close up. But basically what I will do is set up my tripod in on my desk in front of what I'm going to be filming. I will raise the legs a little bit and then the back leg will be raised more. And I have these two weights. They're only two pounds each, but I will put that on the back leg so that it won't fall forward. And I just face the camera down, make sure it's parallel to the desk. And then I will flip out the screen towards myself so that I can see what I'm doing. And the footage will be upside down, so in post I just flip it. And also for shooting overhead, I will also use my lamp. I will bring it to this side of my desk. Filming just straight on, I like to have the lighting even on both sides. So once I have my camera set up this way, I will just go ahead and clear my desk and get my supplies ready. So onto the camera settings. When I'm filming, I use manual focus. I've turned on this setting on my camera, which is called MF peaking. And basically what it does is whenever something is in focus, it's outlined with red. I have this setting on all the time. It really helps with making sure that what you want to focus is definitely for sure in focus. And I actually use manual focus for everything. And then on to the other settings, I have this K setting. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but basically you can adjust the temperature. So I keep it around 35 or 3600, which is pretty much in the middle. And then on the screen, you can see what f-stop and ISO I'm using. So once I've got my setup already and I'm in focus, then I just start filming. And this is the easiest way to film, but again, because it's just in one spot the whole way through, I don't like to film this way too much. But then once I am finished painting or journaling, whatever it is that I'm filming, I will remove the camera from the tripod and then just take some b-roll of the finished product. And most of the time I will switch to the 50 millimeter lens to get some better footage and close-ups of what I've done. And I also take the thumbnail right then too, but that's a whole nother video. But yeah, that's it for filming the overhead videos. And now on to my favorite way of filming. So the more cinematic film look, I just spend so much time filming these videos because I enjoy it so much. My bullet journal video from this month, September, um, I actually filmed this way and loved how it turned out. But I just get to be a little more creative with my shots and I'm always like really happy with how they turn out. So I use the 50 millimeter lens for these videos and only this lens because I also film in 4K and this lens and then with 4K on the camera, the footage just looks really good. And of course it's not necessary, but I, I notice the difference, but I really enjoy filming my videos this way. And then I'm so excited to like edit it, put it all together onto the camera settings. I do film in that same K setting. I like the temperature to be a little bit warmer. I just have my desk lamp and that's it. And I just do that because the extra lighting isn't really needed since this lens is good in low light. 
for the ISO, I usually leave it at around 200 to 400. And since the desk lamp is my main source of lighting for these videos, the f-stop is usually like f2 through 5.6 and whatever I'm filming in these upcoming clips you will see a preview of so that you can see exactly what I'm filming as I'm filming it. So I set my camera on my tripod and usually I start far away so I'll put it like on my smaller desk I have across my room. It will be the widest shot in the video just to establish the setting a little bit because since I am using the 50mm lens um, all the shots are going to be fairly close. So in this wide shot usually like I'll film bringing in my sketchbook or supplies things like that and then I will bring my camera over to my desk and I will get some close-up shots of my supplies or whatever I'm using. So like paints, jars of water, brushes, or my journal supplies, whatever it is I'm filming. And again, film that for a few seconds and then move on. So with each um, movement, I guess you could say, I like to change the angle. It's a lot more fun to watch videos where the angles are constantly changing. Obviously it's more engaging, but it takes a long time. <laughs> And once I start painting too, I have to move fairly quickly because as I'm filming, the paint is drying. So yeah, I will move my camera, I will refocus it, and also slightly change any settings if I need to, lighting-wise, because, you know, wherever I put the camera, the lighting is going to change a little bit. And then I will stop recording, I will get up, move the camera, refocus, record, go back to what I was doing for like a minute, and then stop recording and do it all over again. And I will continue to change the angles until I'm done filming. So in the example clips that you're seeing, I'm not actually working on a painting, but you can kind of see what my process is like. And that is all that I do until I finish. So occasionally I will remove the camera from the tripod and take some handheld footage, but I do have to be careful to get some smooth looking footage because filming in 4K with this camera it can get a bit shaky and the 50mm lens also does not have any built-in image stabilization. So I do just pretty much keep the camera on the tripod the whole time. And that is about it for filming these types of videos. So moving on to my studio vlogs, pretty much just a bunch of random clips thrown together. Um, I'm still trying to find the way that I like to film them. I do film with the 15 to 45 millimeter lens way more, although I do also use the 50 millimeter lens. It's a mix between the two and also a mix of video from my phone. I do record a bit on my phone and I have been a lot more lately. So since my studio vlogs are pretty much just behind the scenes. A lot of the time I will be using my camera to film a video, and so I will use my phone to record what I'm doing in that moment since my camera is being used. So I'll film myself filming. I will either use my camera or my phone to film little clips of me editing, and also sometimes I will screen record when I'm editing since it takes a long time to edit and it's a slow process. It's kind of fun to see it sped up. But yeah, um, I don't really have much else to say about my studio vlogs. It's pretty much self-explanatory. I'm just filming behind the scenes. And also when it comes to studio vlogs, it's mostly the editing that makes them more interesting, at least for me. I'll, you know, make graphics and that is pretty much all I have to say about my studio vlogs. Um, but if there's anything you want to see in studio vlogs and see more of, then just let me know. I'm still trying to get better at them. Hopefully I covered everything, but if there is anything else you want to know or any questions you have, then just let me know in the comments. And that is it for this video. I hope that it helped you. Hope that you got some ideas. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.